Hey everyone, I wanted to make this quick video on how to winterize your personal watercraft. I have two 2008 Sea-Doo Wake 215s. I've had these for about five years. I winterize them myself every year because I live in Seattle, it gets really cold, usually down in the 20s in the winter, and you just winterizing them is a must for long-term storage. And doing you know winterization at the dealer costs about $300 per jet ski. I can get each jet ski done for about 20 bucks if you do it yourself. So this won't be a super in-depth video on how to do it, but I'll just be quickly going over the six or seven steps to winterizing your personal watercraft. So here we go. All right, to do this job, I use these items. I use a little pancake air compressor. I use some rust and corrosion protection, lubricant and penetrant. I use some professional grade fogging oil and some stable fuel stabilizer, as well as a hose adapter kit, which will allow you to run your jet ski on a hose when it's outside of the water. Now, if you want to spend a lot of money, you can buy your name brand, you know, BRP, that's sea -Doo's brand, a form of anti-corrosive, you know, lubricant or fogging oil, but this is like $25, $30 a can. This stuff is about $10 a can, and it's the same stuff. So if you'd like to spend a lot of money, buy your brand name stuff, but it is practically the same stuff. If you need any of these things, I'll put links below to where you can purchase them on Amazon. Let's get to it. Also, it's a good idea to give your, you know, hole a nice bath afterwards and uh, clean it all up, making it look good so it's ready for the end of the season. But you can use any type of, uh, you know, common car wash cleaner. I'll put some links below to what I'd recommend on Amazon. Okay, first thing you want to do is take your fuel stabilizer and get the appropriate amount in your gas tank to treat your gas tank size. My 2008 sea -Doo's have a 16 gallon tank, so I'm going to take about six and a half, seven ounces of this stuff because one ounce of fuel stabilizer does about two and a half uh, gallons treatment per gas. So you're going to want to pour this in first and then fill it up with fresh gas. You never want to store your sea -Doo over the winter uh, with, with no gas. You want to have at least 95% gas in there, otherwise condensation can build and things like that. So let's do it. All right, here we go. There goes the first ounce. We're going to do again six and a half, but you're going to want to check the uh, your owner's manual or just search online to see what size gas tank you have for your personal watercraft. Again, it's always good to put in fresh gas and pour this stuff in first so when you pour the fresh gas in, it will uh, mix. Plus, you know, drive around the block a few times always helps a bit. So let's get, that's number three. We're gonna finish it up here. All right, and then fill it up with fresh gas. I always use premium because I have a supercharged model, but I always recommend premium for all personal watercrafts. It just makes the engines run a little bit better. So just fill her on up. All right, next step is to run your uh, sea -Doo or your personal watercraft on a garden hose to let that fuel stabilizer get through the fuel system in your jet ski. I have the f uh, hose adapter kit. Your jet ski may or may not need these, but this pretty much just screws on to the inside of your jet ski. I'll show where it goes. This connects to your garden hose. You connect them together, and that allows you to feed water into your, uh, your sea -Doo while it's outside of the water. Okay, on the back of my sea -Doo, the intake, or excuse me, yeah, for the water, is right in the back there. I'll highlight it with an arrow, but this little piece will screw right in there. Okay, as you can see, it is now screwed all the way in. Okay, and now attach the female end of the hose adapter kit to your hose. And as I showed you in the previous clip, this part just pulls back and locks onto the uh, female, excuse me, the male nipple of the uh, other end. Okay, we got the hose attached. As it says in the owner's manual, you're always supposed to start these first before you start the water. So we're gonna start this up. <coughs> Then we're gonna run over quick to the hose, turn that all the way on, and you're gonna wanna ensure that water is coming out the back like that. So we're good to go. We're gonna let it run for about two to three minutes. Okay, it's been running for three minutes, so we're gonna reverse the steps, turn off the water completely, and then run over and turn off the engine like so. Okay, next we're gonna be using our fogging oil to fog the cylinders in the engine. Since this is, you know, a four-stroke engine, uh, you do, it does not have a carburetor, it's fuel injected, so you do not need to spray this down, you know, a, um, an air filter and choke out the engine, which you have to do on two-stroke models. But on four-stroke models, all you have to do is spray the fogging oil into the cylinders. 
All right, we got the cover and coil packs and everything pulled off, so now we're just gonna be pulling out all three of the spark plugs. Okay, loosen all the spark plugs and then use a magnet. Go down in there, pull out the plugs. Okay, now take your fogging oil and spray about two to three seconds down into each cylinder. There's one. Okay, next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is crank over the engine a few times to get that fogging oil down into each cylinder. Uh, how you do that is you connect your key and then you're gonna to wanna to hold your throttle all the way open while you're cranking it, and that'll disable the ignition system on your Sea-Doo or your personal watercraft because you don't want your ignition system to be uh, firing if you do not have spark plugs in, which we currently do not, as you're aware of. So you're going to want to take like either a shop towel or something, place that over the cylinders, and then put something, you know, slightly heavy to keep that weighted down while we crank it over. Okay, I have my key connected. Again, put your throttle, hold it all the way open, and crank it for about two to three seconds. Okay, next step is to look at your spark plugs and see if they need replacement. If so, this is always kind of a good time to put new spark plugs in so it's fresh to go next season, but I just put these in last year. I only replace these about every two years, so I'm just gonna reinstall these. A lot of folks like to do oil changes at this point too. So what you're gonna need for one of those is an oil extractor. However, I usually like to do mine right before the season starts, but a lot of people do it during the winterization process, so it's up to you. Okay, I have the spark plugs reinstalled. We're gonna be putting the coil packs back on. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have some dielectric grease on there. If not, you're gonna to wanna to apply some to keep moisture out and everything like that. All right, what we're gonna be doing now is using our air compressor to blow out any residual water out of the uh, exhaust manifold in your sea -Doo or personal watercraft. Since these are water-cooled, water gets sucked in there, and any residual water that's left in there during storage, if it freezes over time, when water freezes, it expands and it can crack your exhaust manifold, which is a really expensive repair. So this is really easy to do. Charge up your air compressor to 100 PSI. Make sure you have like a rubber nipple so it creates a good seal. And we're just gonna be connecting this, you're not connecting it, but just shoving it up against the male end of the nipple on the, um, when we were running the uh, jet ski on the hose just a few clips ago. All right, so again, we're just gonna be connecting the, uh, the nozzle of the air compressor to the part where the uh, hose was going in. I'll highlight it by an arrow there. So I'm just gonna reach in there, make sure it's connected. Oh, give me a second here. There we go, we're gonna hold it down. And you can see all that water coming out. That water would have freezed and cracked the exhaust manifold potentially if we didn't get it all out. So you're just going to keep blowing air through it so you don't see any more water coming out. Okay, next thing I do is take my fluid film and just spray the entire jet assembly. You know, all these ball joint connections, anywhere there's metal, you know, steer this thing all the way over, hit up in there, steer the steering all the way to the left, hit it up all in, in there. Anywhere there's metal contact, you're just gonna wanna kinda douche the whole thing. You can't hurt it. And this stuff will just keep things from rusting or jamming up over time. Another spot that I usually hit is right inside on the back here. You can see where I hit it. All this, uh, you know, throttle, throttle cable and all that stuff, I usually just kind of soak it all. Can't hurt it. Okay, second to the last step, what we're going to do now is just remove the battery and hook it up to a battery maintainer or a trickle charger, they're called, so it keeps it fresh and ready to go for next season. Okay, we have a happy little sea battery connected, and it is charging. That yellow light will turn green when it's fully charged, but, you know, since I only have one battery maintainer and two sea with two batteries, I will, uh, you know, swap this over and just make sure both batteries are maintained all season. This will save you from having to buy a new $150, $200 battery, which is a bonus. Okay, now would be a good time to give your sea a nice bath and either spray it with some, you know, XPS hole cleaner or just get yourself some gold class car wash. You can get this for a lot less than you can this and, you know, it doesn't harm anything. But yeah, clean up your sea making sure it looks fly for next season. Okay, one more little tip that I might recommend doing that I've always done, it's cheap, is get yourself, you know, a little heat lamp. You can buy these, you know, uh, from Harbor Freight for like five bucks or Amazon, they just clip on and get yourself like a 60 watt incandescent light bulb, not an LED light bulb that doesn't put out any heat. You want an old school regular light bulb. And what I do is I just clamp it 
inside somewhere where it's not making contact. I usually put it right around here. And what that does is, you know, when you have your cover on all season, it just, you know, 60 watts pumps out a little bit of heat and it'll keep moisture. You see the moisture down there and all that stuff. That's just from sitting. And, you know, that collects everywhere in the engine bay. Having a little 60 watt light bulb running in there with the seat on there and everything really does help because when you open it up, it's dry and happy. Well, everyone, I hope you found this how-to video informative on how to winterize your Sea-Doo or personal watercraft. You know, some people might say I missed a few steps, but you know, I've been doing this for about five or six years, and my jet skis fire up no problem at the end of every season. Some people go really, really far and remove the whole pump assembly and, you know, inspect the wear ring and all that stuff, which I advise doing, but I usually have the dealer do that because that's more of a really involved process. But, you know, this will get your sea -Doo maintained and winterized and ready for next season. So if you found this video informative, please hit that like button. It helps it surface to more people looking for this topic. And uh, hope to see you in the next video. Bye.